Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about The Flash Season 6, Episode 3. This is going to be my review for the new episode that premiered last night. So I watched it live last night, and I took part in Paigey and Eric's Reloaded's live stream, the after party on Eric's channel. So go check that out because we talked about the shows in depth, talked about Supergirl, The Flash, Arrow, Batwoman, and lots of other stuff. And I got roasted a couple of times, so go check that out because it was very good fun. And I've been told not to say one thing in this video, which I'm going to say, or I'll tease, just for the sake of it. Anyway, so yeah, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Okay, so how the episode starts off is sort of carrying on from where they ended last episode. So, Barry and Iris gather the team together and they reveal that Crisis is coming a lot sooner than they anticipated. It's coming December this year. So they revealed that. I was sort of expecting that in the next few episodes or so, so I'm kind of glad that they got that out of the way. And so they talk about how Barry saw a giant wave of antimatter destroy all of Central City, killed all of you guys. Straight away it puts the stakes up puts it way higher than it was already because it's not just Barry worrying about it, it's everyone worrying about it and you specifically see this mainly with Killer Frost this episode because there is a heavy focus on her with Barry and you know she is essentially terrified of dying and so we get reference to the monitor, Tisco has this cool line about him being an Asgardian cosplayer, loved that, I thought that was very funny, I laughed out loud and then we have this stuff in this episode, and it's some weird stuff. I talked about it in the live stream last night, but Ralph's mum shows up, and Paige and Eric were a fan of it, but I didn't particularly like Ralph's mum. Sort of just showed up out of nowhere, like that Scottish guy last season that was with Ralph, who was like an accomplice or something, I'm not sure. But so she just shows up. They try and have this sort of heart to heart, but Ralph eventually finds out that her boyfriends who had supposedly died didn't die, she was covering up and you know it hurt Ralph and I just didn't see that like properly. It, it felt very hollow and I wasn't affected by it but other people were so that's just me. Um, so that's probably my only flaw with the episode, the Ralph's mum stuff because I just didn't really like it. and. Okay, let's talk about Killer Frost and Barry as I teased before. So they team up for an investigation. It was great seeing Killer Frost on the scene actually investigating. And then you have the realization that this meta, whoever he is, he's, you know, got dark matter on him. So she initially goes, oh, who has talked about this recently? Ramsey Russo. So they go to Ramsey's place and Killer Frost threatens to kill him. She puts a dagger of ice to his throat. And I thought that was really good how sort of blunt she was because, you know, blood work is very, very sort of tricksy in this episode. You get to see him pretending to be not controlling this person, to have not been the one who gave this guy who's called Mitch, the sort of zombie meta, you know, his powers. So I think Ramsey was pretty good in this episode. I think the way they set up his powers is really intriguing. The fact that he's sort of like a bloodbender, if you've ever seen Avatar The Last Airbender. He's controlling the blood inside other people, and he's able to essentially reanimate corpses, reanimate cells, which is a big thing towards the end of the episode, because that is how he's going to go on and continue with his plans to heal himself. He's going to use this stuff, the infused dark matter, with the blood to actually heal his in a, you know, whatever his problems are. I think it's cancer? I could be wrong, but... So he's gonna do that, but that's what's gonna make him go on, go full on blood work. You know, his cells are gonna mutate, they're gonna change, and they're gonna be like the sort of arm that he made. If you remember back to episode one at the ending, we got that reveal, that final scene where his arm sort of shoots out. So he's able to control blood essentially, and you know, he's gonna fully sort of mutate in the next few episodes. Okay, so Harrison Wells returns, but it's not a normal Harry. And so we get Wells attacking Cisco and Iris. He's very playful. That's what I wrote down in my notes. He's very sort of similar to Harrison Wells from Earth 2, but different in the way that he's more like Indiana Jones. So Iris actually tases him, which I thought was very funny. 
how she sort of was like, yeah, no, this guy's weird. He's getting way too close and he's being very confrontative. I don't know if that's a word, but he strangled Cisco and everything like that. So she wasn't taking any chances. And so that scene was pretty good. And then we didn't actually get that much of Harrison Wells in this episode, but you know, he makes a cool getaway with some smoke. He gets away, but then he reveals he actually knows about the Council Wells. He doesn't like the Council Wells. But then he reveals the big thing as to why he's on this earth. We don't find out what earth he's from, but we find out that he's here, in fact, to find an artifact. And what is this artifact? This artifact is called Eternium. And Eternium is actually heavily linked to Shazam in the comics, and it's shards of matter cast off from the Rock of Eternity after its destruction. So heavily to do with Shazam and everything that happens there. It's from the 30th century. This is the bit that I'm not allowed to talk about because this is Paige's video on the weekend because he threatened to slip my ears off. So I'm not going to steal his video, but essentially just think about time travel. Think about how this rock may be in association to Iris. And that's what I'll say. Check out Paige's video on the weekend. Okay, so let's move on to talk about the next thing. So the next thing is... Barry aids blood work in this episode. He gives him the dark matter. He's about to steal it. I thought that scene was really good. Barry catches him. And so, essentially, blood work actually realizes in Barry's look that he knows he's about to die. He's sort of in his last days. He's marking his days. And so he says, get out of my lab. Grant does a really good performance in this episode. Like, he was really convincing with all the different stuff. And so, essentially, what it's teasing is, I think both of these two guys are, you know, going down the same trajectory, but the paths are obviously going to cross quite a few times in the next few episodes, but they're going to go around it in different ways, basically. Okay, so then we move on, and we've got Ramsey, you know, using his powers, and by the end of the episode, like I said earlier, we get the reveal that he is actually going to control blood by using dark matter infused with blood and it can heal any cells and all cells in his body he's going to fully turn into that blood work comic work version of himself and so we get this meta of the week i mean he's all right he's a zombie not very tense i think they try to make it tense he's doing some shady stuff and he kills some people he's basically invincible and at one point he breaks out of star labs and I think that's fine. We discussed that on the stream last night. At first I was like, ha, oh, that makes no sense. But it's actually to cage metahumans. And he's not a metahuman. He's dead. And he's been reanimated alive. So I think that's fine as to why he got out. And so moving back to the Caitlyn and Barry stuff. For most of the episode, Caitlyn, obviously not Caitlyn Killer Frost. Which I still find a bit weird how Caitlyn's not been in, you know, the last few episodes. Because she's just been subdued and... That's kind of strange to me. And I prefer Caitlyn, even though I love Killer Frost. Caitlyn's one of my favorite characters, so kind of missing her. But anyway, so what happens with her this episode is we get Barry trying to train her, get her ready for Crisis, but she is extremely scared. She doesn't want to end her fate in this way. She's, you know, not ready for this. She's just got out. She's sort of getting back to normal. You know, there's a discussion to be made if, she, you know, she's just gone back on herself because I think last season, Caitlyn and Killer Frost were talking to each other like it was pretty fine. They were pretty okay. So, yeah, well, that's another conversation. But anyway, so we get that and by the end of the episode, it's Killer Frost's birthday and it's obviously Caitlyn's, but Caitlyn's not there. And we have this party, and it's essentially her letting loose. She has sort of accepted Barry's stranger in a way that, you know, she can move forward with the future. And so this scene was completely out of nowhere, the party scene, but man, was it fun. Barry dancing, Killer Frost dancing, you got Iris and Barry dancing, you got Caitlin and, you know, Cisco. It's hilarious, especially Grant. Like, some of his moves are just amazing. I freaking loved it. It was hilarious. So that was a great way to be near the end of the episode. And, you know, I, I was just laughing. It was great. And so we head towards the end of the episode and we get the big revelation to the team that was kind of inevitable with how the episode started with revealing Crisis. He reveals that Barry is set to die in Crisis. Well, he reveals himself. 
I have to die in crisis. And the monitor told them this is the only way. Barry saw billions of possible futures. The only way they succeed is if Barry dies. So that's a big revelation. And then the ending scene to the episode is this new version of Harrison Wells. He finds this substance. He finds the Eternium and you know, I think that's going to lead into a lot of the stuff with Iris this season. Check out Paige's video for that. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please be sure to share the video around. If you did enjoy it, share it with your friends online, on social media, in real life. And anyway guys, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.